Hey guys, this is Scott McKay from X and Y Communications coming at you again with another video newsletter. Today I have part two of that series for you on being a powerful man of masculine influence. And guess what? I've saved the second story, which is the best story for last. About 10 or 12 years ago, after I had been in the IT world for a while and had gotten a, a regional management position with a pretty decent sized manufacturer of uh, networking hardware. I had a deal that was worth several million dollars that I was working on. We hadn't won it yet, but I was working on it with a company that was known as an integrator. In other words, they were the local company on the street that was actually responsible for building out the project after it was sold, for running the cable, installing the switches and the routers and getting everything running. And of course, like I said, there was this huge deal at stake and it was just about to be closed. Now the decision maker on this deal was a big barrel chested man who was of Hispanic descent because this was a uh, school district on the uh, Rio Grande border down in Texas and he was the superintendent of this school district and they played 5A football. It was a big old school district. Now this particular superintendent was rather proud of himself. He was what you would call a very macho man. You know, if you got into a meeting with him, he would basically say things to you like, this is what we want to do. We're going to do this my way because I'm the one who is in charge around here, not you. We don't do what you tell me to do. We do what I say we do. He literally was that kind of guy. So anyone who was a very savvy salesperson or a very savvy integrator in terms of my partner down here who was the one who would be building out this project for him could very easily infer that if you make this guy look good in front of his school board in front of his subordinates if you basically tell him how wonderful his ideas are and you're happy to happy to implement them well then guess what you basically win all of his deals that's how it pretty much worked well I knew that and my partner who was with the integration company knew that but what I didn't know was that my partner with the integration company had an incredible ace in the hole. He had something up his sleeve that I couldn't possibly have predicted and it ended up getting us that deal. Here's how it worked. As it turns out where this guy happened to live the sitting US congressman had been incumbent for over 30 years. He had long since become very comfortable with his position as one of the most powerful guys in the United States sitting as a US congressman. Of course that's exactly what it's like to be that guy. He's used to basically having people kiss his ring and adore him everywhere he goes but after 30 years of being in that position he had this amazing quiet confidence about him and of course it was amazing. It was like an aura everywhere he went this particular congressman was just very gracious and pretty much had nothing left to prove to anybody he could be rather than trying to impress somebody with his being if that makes sense and I hope it does uh, I'm gonna give you an example straight away well of course the ace in the hole was that my friend with the integration company the guy who owned the integration company had known this sitting US congressman for a couple decades now they had been friends for ages, so they had a very comfortable friendship. And as it turned out, when the superintendent of this school district showed up to take a tour of the integration company, he planned a little lunch. And just as a matter of coincidence, I guess, the calendar matched up so that the lunch took place on a day when that U.S. congressman friend of his was in town. Knowing the ego and knowing the personality of this guy who was the superintendent of the school district, my friend had the foresight to invite his friend, the U.S. congressman, to lunch with us just out of the blue as a little surprise. Now, fortuitously, the arrangements were made at the table so as the superintendent was sat right across from this, you know, elderly, not really elderly, but you know, definitely a venerable guy in his 70s who had been a U.S. congressman for years. And of course, the longer you are in Congress, you know, the more seniority you get and the more respect you get. Well, here's how the conversation went with the guy from the superintendent, the guy who was the superintendent of the school board, with the guy who was a sitting U.S. congressman. 95% of the conversation 
was spoken by guess who? You got it. The guy who was the superintendent. Well, you should come down and see what we've got going on in my school district. We are leading in test scores, and we've just installed this brand new stadium with AstroTurf, and we are leading the whole state of Texas with this. And I will never, ever forget how this sitting U.S. congressman, this man of true influence and power, responded to this guy who thought he was so powerful. He listened. And not only did he listen, he listened intently. He didn't get all up in the guy's chili and go, oh, wow, that's really amazing, and, and feign that kind of sort of super excitement, that hyper interest. No, he basically sat back in his chair, kind of crossed his fingers together, and furrowed his eyebrows a little bit, and just nodded slightly and, and said, oh, wow, that's interesting, with his facial body expression. Leaning back the whole time, relaxing not feeling like he had to do anything, but offering what looked to me like genuine interest. You know, his eyebrows furrowed, a little nod here and there. The guy was cool as a cucumber. You know who he reminded me of? He reminded me of the guy in the Dos Equis commercials, frankly, only even cooler, with a regal flair, with just this incredible aura of importance without having to assert it at all. It was amazing. And you know what? was effortless. He truly was important. He lifted his head high. You could tell he was a man of tremendous confidence who believed in his own ability to affect just about anything, but he didn't have to prove it to you. He just quietly assumed you knew that. It was all good. and He wanted to put everybody else around him at ease. No wonder this guy had been re-elected time and time again because he knew what it took to be influential as a powerful, masculine man. And it worked tremendously for him. Now, contrast that kind of horsepower in terms of your raw influential ability with the guy on the other side of the table who was blathering on and on. He thought he was influential. He thought he was powerful. But secretly, everybody who worked for him kind of rolled their eyes and said, yeah, well, we got to go do what Pamphilo wants to do because, you know, he said so. That's not influence. That's kind of like being a bull in a china shop and getting your way through life by brute force. Yeah, maybe he got to be the superintendent of a school district, but he wasn't really the U.S. congressman, and I don't think he would get voted in that way. And what's more, he didn't have the presence of mind to see the difference between how he went about doing things in life, his M.O. when working and associating with other people, versus what that U.S. congressman basically had reached unconscious competence of doing. Amazing, amazing thing to watch someone who's that powerful and influential at work because they just know their stuff. And to kind of prove it out, a couple years later I had the chance to do a website, uh, work on a project for another guy in another congressional district who was a U.S. congressman, and I'll never forget as I was telling him the plan for his website, he kind of sat back, looked at me with furrowed eyebrows, and nodded slightly as I was talking. Man, did I ever feel important. I felt like I had his attention. Same exact thing, of course. You can do this simply by practicing your body language and starting to really see yourself as a man of power and influence who doesn't need to tell everyone about that. Let them figure it out on their own. It's magical and it's wonderful. And even though you may not be a man of incredible power right now, with an attitude and a demeanor like that, watch yourself get promoted at work and watch the women just be magnetically drawn to you, as well as other dudes too, frankly. They'll want to know what you know. They'll want your opinion to be the last one they get at a meeting. And your life's going to be pretty good and you'll never really have to try too hard ever again. This is Scott McKay from X and Y Communications. Be good out there, guys.